I mentioned earlier in this course, briefly, uh, that there is a new paradigm uh, that is emerging, a new philosophy when it comes to thinking of our world and, and of reality itself. I'm going to elaborate on that now for the first time in this, uh, in this course. It is a new way of thinking. And I'll just state the thinking and then we'll flesh out what it means. The philosophy is this, that consciousness informs itself through its creations. Consciousness informs itself through its creations. And I'm going to invite you just to think a moment. Give yourself the opportunity to really embrace what this philosophy is telling us. It's saying that the things that we build around us, it's saying that the things that we create our art, all the paintings, the sculptures, the music that we create. When we solve eloquent mathematic problems, uh, when Hollywood creates films, all of these things that we think maybe we're doing to entertain ourselves or we're doing to create diversions, while they may fulfill that role, they may also be fulfilling something much deeper. Because this philosophy suggests that everything that we create is us, collectively, consciousness, asking ourselves to remember something about ourselves and to stimulate that memory within us by something that we're building outside of us. It's an awesome possibility, an awesome possibility. So when you really begin to think about this, let's take movies, let's take Hollywood films. And I, I love to do this. And once I became aware of this philosophy, uh, I apply it all the time now. It's hard for me just to think of a movie as a movie for fun or a movie for entertainment. If it's out there, you know, well, you have to ask yourself, just ask yourself, when a new genre of movie appears, uh, just for example, The Matrix, because I, I spoke about it earlier in this program, it was a, a novel idea in terms of science fiction. It was produced really well on a relatively low budget. Uh, where did the idea for the matrix even come from? For the idea that there's a world that we cannot see that influences our everyday lives and that we have the ability to influence that unseen world to change what's happening in our lives today. So I don't want to spoil the movie if you haven't seen it once again. But where did that idea come from? You say, well, you know, it came from the brothers that, that made the, the movie, and that's true. But where did they pick it up? Is it something that they just reached inside one day and said, hey, let's, let's make a movie about a field of energy that we can't see that influences our everyday lives? Or was that something that was percolated in the field, in the stream of consciousness that we all tap into? And, and they happened to tap into it from a creative perspective. So when we begin thinking along these lines, then we have to look, what is it that we're asking ourselves to remember? What is consciousness creating that is triggering us to embrace uh, about ourselves? What themes are we being asked to look at? And I think one of the ways to go about answering that is to do just that. Look at the themes of the most popular films today. So what are recent memories? What are some of the most popular films? And I'm going to go with some we've already talked about, for example, The Matrix, uh, 1999, was a movie about this unseen world. Uh, that only an altered state of consciousness can access. And once that state was accessed, uh, it became obvious that our everyday lives were about being enslaved in a world that we simply were not even aware of. Very, very powerful concept, very powerful movie, a lot of parallels with today's life uh, and today's lifetime. Uh, almost uh, at the same time, that movie caught on so quickly, it spawned other similar kinds of movies. Inception uh, came out about our ability to dream within the dream that is our everyday life. We go to sleep at night to drop into another dream and from that to drop into another dream, to multiple, drop into multiple deeper and deeper dreams where in the film entire business transactions and choices were made in those dreams that influenced our, our everyday world. Then of course the movie Avatar came out about our relationship to the natural world uh, on the one hand, and also about our relationship to consciousness, digital realities 
and the ability to transfer consciousness from one form of life into another. In this case, from a human disabled being on the ship to an avatar uh, that was designed to fit in to the life of, of a new world that was being seen in the film. Very, very powerful concepts. What was consciousness trying to tell us? And if you look at, at some of the more recent films and the ones our young people are really drawn to, what are the themes uh, of the movies? What, what movies are there? Wonder Woman, for example, very, very powerful film, especially for young, young women, young girls. Uh, the Avengers, different people with different superpowers, different abilities that they have developed or that they were instilled with from the time of birth. Star Wars, uh, the whole idea of these extraordinary abilities and, and using these abilities in this ultimate uh, and eternal battle between good and evil and dark and light. All of these, if these are more than just entertainment, what are they asking us to remember? Well, you have to ask, what are the themes through the most popular films that we're seeing? Common themes include the fact that there are, in the films, that there are powerful worlds that exist that, for whatever reason, from our perspective in reality, from our vantage point, we are not able to see. It's like if you're standing on one part of the earth and earth is a curved surface, there are other realities that you cannot see because the curvature won't allow you to see them. If you can take that idea in terms of dimensions, there are things happening in this dimension that are the product of what are happening in other dimensions. And just because we can't see those other dimensions doesn't mean they're not there and that we're not active in them. Powerful worlds that we can't see. Almost universally, these films all held some individual that was awakened to a deeper power within them, a superpower. And you know, that concept appeals to adults as well as children, almost universally. And when I ask in our live audiences all over the world, not just in English audiences, not just in the United States of America, it's on every continent. I've been on six continents. I've been over 40 nations. And I ask people these questions, sometimes directly, sometimes to the translators. And interestingly, the universal answers. I'm not surprised and I'm in awe at how deeply connected we really are and how unified that connection really is and how unifying that deep connection may become if we embrace what it means in our lives. So almost universally, when I ask my audiences about untapped powers within them, everyone feels that they possess capabilities, potentials that they've never developed, that no one told them about, that there's a sense, this latent sense that they're there, that they're dormant within us. The, the theme of good and evil and light and dark is almost universal. And of course, we see that playing out many levels in our waking conscious reality today. Plays out in the workplace, uh, plays out in our neighborhoods, it plays out in our society, it plays out in our nation, it plays out between nations. And what I think is the key is that we are born with the power to choose. We choose how much we become involved in those worlds we can't see. We choose to tap our untapped powers. We choose to uh, participate in the unfolding of good versus evil, light versus dark. And we choose the role that we play in that great eternal battle. So all of these themes are telling us something about ourselves from this perspective that consciousness informs itself through its creations. So the universal theme, theme and all these comes back to what we've done for the first five modules of this course is that we are the technology. We are the highly sophisticated, technologi technologically advanced, but soft inner technology as tissue and membranes and fluids and ionic potential and electrical charge. We are that technology. And we're beginning to understand how we access this powerful internal technology. One of the keys that we talked about in module number three was the extraordinary ability that we have as humans to do something that no other form of life that we're aware of can do right now. 
And that is to take two separate organs at will, consciously, on demand, and harmonize the output of those organs into a single system. Such a powerful self-regulatory technology. When we harmonize the heart and the brain by creating experiences in the heart that send this very low frequency signal to the brain, 0.1 hertz. When we do that, that sets the stage. It opens the door for our, our inner harmony, for us then to embark upon whatever journey we choose to embark upon to utilize that perfect harmony. So some of those benefits were passive, as I mentioned, they're rejuvenating uh, longevity, rejuvenation of the cells, uh, immune response, um, resilience to change, all of that. Some of them are active, where we drop into this program, if you will. We're thinking of, of the body as a system. And within this operating system of the human body, uh, we have programs and we actually drop programs into the programs. So when we, and, and the beauty of this is that you don't have to know any of it. But by following the principles of our most ancient and cherished spiritual traditions that are all about the heart, focusing on the heart, uh, forgiveness from the heart, love, compassion, understanding, the whole Buddhist tradition is an inner technology based in compassion. We don't have to understand the physics and the biology. We can follow the practice. But now the physics and the biology and the genetics and the epigenetics are all telling us why those practices are so effective and how much further we can take them as we apply this new understanding of our inner technology to the world and to the, the challenges and the changes that we've never seen before. So it begins with this inner technology. Now, what I did not say, I promised I would elaborate. Uh, I think most of you know, and I mentioned earlier in the program, I am a degree geologist, an earth scientist. And when I began to understand what I'm about to share with you, it, it just sealed the deal for me. Not that I had any doubts of my potential or your potential, but when I began to see this science, uh, it told me to an even greater degree why we are such powerful beings and, and how much power we really have. So check this out. What you're seeing here, and I don't want this to be technical, so just think in terms of themes, all right? Uh, what you're looking at is uh, a measurement of, uh, of a form of magnetics for the planet. Now, some of you have read or heard, uh, even me years ago, talking about what are called Schumann resonances. That's not what this is. Schumann resonances are atmospheric resonances. They're called cavity resonances, the cavity of the atmosphere above the planet. That's not what this is. These are magnetic fields within the Earth. They're called field line resonance frequencies. All I want you to see, look at the first big spike where that red arrow is. Guess, just take a wild guess. Take a wild technology consciousness and evolution guess. That's the name of this program. What that frequency is, but, but don't answer it. Let me give you a clue. There's the clue right there. It's not zero. It's not 0 0.2. That spike is 0 0.1 hertz. If that looks familiar, it's because we just talked about it. 0 0.1 hertz is the optimum frequency between the heart and the brain to harmonize two organs into one system, the neurons in the heart, the neurons in the brain, harmonizing into one system. And the beauty of this is that we create that harmony through the choices that we make to feel the feelings, to have the emotions in our heart that send that 0.1 hertz to the brain. Uh, the easiest of those emotions, they're, they're all uh, positive life-affirming emotions. The easiest of those emotions is perhaps gratitude uh, for anything or anyone, appreciation, care, compassion. You notice love is not one of those words. The scientists tell us that love means different things to different people. And some of us, for some of us, love has not been a good experience. So the word love may not work to harmonize the heart and the brain. However, this is so beautiful. When you think about it, gratitude is an expression of love. Care is an expression of love, appreciation, compassion. They're all expressions of love. So ultimately, we're using love. We're just not using the word love, all right? So having said that, we create that 0.1 hertz between the heart and the brain. Now, why is this so powerful? 
Well, look at what happens when you harmonize a heart and a brain, the point one hertz, not only are you harmonizing the organs and cells within your being, you are also now harmonizing your entire being to the planet that you live on, to the magnetic field resonance to the planet you live on. Wow. That's a powerful thing to do. This is where your mastery comes in. Because when you align the systems within your body to the systems <clears throat> uh, beyond your body, when you bring your body into alignment with the planet you live on, that harmony is where healing begins. This is where your healing really begins. And there's something else about this. I, I just want you to see this. Uh, the image you're seeing, this is an artist's conception of earth there's our, our beautiful planet earth right there in the center and all of these blue lines that you're seeing around represent a cross section of the magnetic fields that protect us from the solar wind that you see coming from the left hand side of your screen it's the energy from the sun that is moving 93 million miles across space and it is these magnetic fields you can see they're deformed on the left-hand side by the pressure of that plasma, the pressure of, uh, of the sun's energy pushing against those fields. What you can also see from this is that there's a friction, and that's what I want you to see. The sun's energy produces a friction against those magnetic fields. Now I'm gonna show you another image of the fields, and this isn't an artist's conception, this is an actual NASA image. If you look, at the magnetic fields that surround our planet. Each one conceptually you can think of as a string on an instrument, just like a string on a guitar or a string on a violin. And the energy from the sun pushing against the magnetic fields, that friction is like the energy from the sun plucking each one of those strings. And as it does so, each string creates a sound and together there is a very unique sound that comes from the magnetic field of the earth i'm going to set this into motion so that you can actually see this is a, a time-lapse nasa image look at how the sun's energy is plucking the strings of the magnetic field and if you can imagine that each one makes a sound so i'm sharing this with you so this is more than just a concept i want you to see how real this is when you harmonize your heart and your brain, you're harmonizing to the fields of the planet you live on. Now, here's a cross-section of the magnetic fields of the Earth. This is a cross-section of the magnetic field of the human heart. The Institute of Heart Math, a pioneering organization in Northern California, was able to create this image based on computer modeling that was done in the early 1990s. So if you look at this image, the magnetic field is the shape uh, that is called a torus. It's like a donut. It extends from the heart three to five feet physically beyond the, or beyond the physical heart uh, and forms this image, uh, this pattern. Realistically, it's believed the field goes much, much further. That three to five feet is a limitation of the equipment being used to measure the fields. So it is suspected that on a quantum level, the energy from your heart and my heart extends infinitely, infinitely. Probably no surprise to you. But this is what science knows right now. So this, this isn't the aura, this isn't the prana, it's not a new age, new thought uh, hypothesis. This is rock solid science. This is an electromagnetic field extending beyond the strongest bioelectrical and biomagnetic field in your body. It's not the brain, it's the heart. So if you look at it in cross section, it should look familiar because it looks like the cross section of the magnetic field of the earth. When you harmonize your heart and your brain, what you're doing is you're bringing these two fields into alignment, just like you're seeing right now. It's a powerful visual. You'll think about this a lot because this is where your mastery comes from. When you can create this harmony in your body, you're doing this, you're programming your soft technology to create this harmony. And once that harmonious place is created, it's up to you in terms of how you apply it in your life. All kinds of things you can do from this place of harmony. So that's what the rest of this program is all about. This 0.1 hertz is the doorway to the healing, the regeneration, the rejuvenation, and, and so much more. Now let me give you a little example here. 
what you're seeing on your screen, you've seen before. Uh, these are neurons, living neurons inside of a, of a human brain, living human brain. Uh, and they're firing randomly, and that's the point. I want you to see each neuron is firing randomly. What would happen if you could harness all of those neurons to fire simultaneously? If you could harness the energy from all of those neurons as they light up simultaneously, harness that energy and direct it to the healing in your body or any of the other functions of heart-brain harmony that we're talking about. What would that look like? Well, let me show you what it looks like. This is a, a, another experiment. This was done in a Russian laboratory. Uh, this is not a human brain. It is the brain of a zebrafish, but it will illustrate the principle very, very clearly. Look to the left of your screen, and what you're going to see is over 90% of the neurons are going to be triggered so that they will fire simultaneously. This will answer the question, what does it look like? There it is right there. Look at that. Look at that. Over 90% of those neurons. Now, for a zebrafish, the reason this is happening is the fish, this was a living fish, it was faked out into thinking it was swimming uh, in a, a current that was at odds with the current it was already swimming in, and it had to rebalance itself quickly. So that's a survival. That's a, that's a survival moment. So for the fish, what it's saying is, I'm just going to, <laughs> I'm going to paraphrase what that zebrafish brain is saying. It's saying, I better get as much energy as I can and direct that energy into the parts of my body that need it the most to course correct or nothing else is going to make any difference. So that is precisely what is happening right here, is those neurons are firing simultaneously uh, to give the fish all of the focus it needs so that it can survive. What does that look like for a human? Well, when you're talking about humans, uh, there, uh, there's another technology that's called glass brain technology that allows us to see that we do something very similar, that we, we are able to bring coherence to different parts of the brain so that many, many neurons can fire simultaneously. How do we accomplish that? You've got the tools right now. When you harmonize the heart in the brain, Two organs, one system. Part of that harmony is the ability to fire those neurons simultaneously. And when we do that, we are directing that harmony to the entire body. Everything in the body is connected to everything else. So not only are you harmonizing heart and brain to 0.1 hertz, that 0.1 hertz energy is harmonizing every cell in your body, all the organs in your body. Your body actually interprets 0.1 hertz as love. So when you harmonize the heart and your brain to your body, you are loving yourself in a language that the body recognizes and benefits from. It's the beauty of self-regulation. So heart-brain harmony, it's only the beginning of what we're talking about. If you'd like to see more, click the link below and you'll gain access to hundreds of transformational education programs on the Humanity Stream Plus platform.